Hello everybody, welcome back. I hope you're as excited as I am for some more Star Trek The Original Series today, Season 2, episode um, called Obsession. Just a brief little aside, this is my new favorite thing ever. Thank you again, William, for purchasing it for me. And I realized that when I put it on with this top, I look like a pirate. And I don't know, I really dig in it. Alright, anyways, let's get trekking. Or should I say, let's go where no scurvy dog has been before. Arr. There it is. Pure Tritanium. Scotty, you can mark this vein as confirmed. Inform Starfleet, I recommend that they dispatch a survey vessel immediately. I'll phaser off a specimen. Hey, it's the clampy things are back. From Operation Annihilate. Did you smell that? Not ravioli this time, though. Burnt a ravioli, maybe. like honey. It was years ago. A thing with a, an odor like that. Scan for dichronium in the atmosphere. If you see any gaseous cloud, fire immediately. Oh, I saw a cloud. Isn't it crazy how a scent can, like, trigger our memories like that? The last time I caught an odor like that was 11 years ago. Seemed to read Dicornium for a minute, and then I lost it. It's almost like something out there knows I'm scanning it. Something sentient? Uh-oh. Kirk here. Cloud! Cloud! Hell! Oh, man. Three red shirts already. Dead. And you'll find every red corpuscle gone from their body. Oh. They are super pale. Ashy. Oh, he's less so. Ritzo's alive. Barely. Ooh. You think you know what it was, Captain? Something that can't possibly exist. But it does. Okay, I can't wait to learn about this. How's Ensign Ritzo? Still unconscious, sir. His blood count is still 60% less than normal. So it's like a vampire? The USS Yorktown is expecting to rendezvous with us in less than seven hours. Those vaccines he's transferring to us are highly perishable. Those medical supplies are badly needed on planet Theta-7. Gentlemen. It's always something, isn't it? We are it? remaining in orbit until I find out more about those deaths. I'm perfectly aware that it might cost lives on Theta-7. Kirk out. Oh, wow. Autopsy report. There wasn't a red corpuscle left in their bodies. What happened is medically impossible. I suggest you look at the record tapes of past similar occurrences. Can you bring Ensign Rizzo to consciousness? He could slap him. He's good at that. Give me one cc of Cordyceen, nurse. Captain's orders. You were attacked by something. A sickly sweet odor. Did you smell it? Yes. Strange smell. It was... I was trying to, to draw strength from us. Hey, sir. He's already told me what I wanted to know. He could be dreaming, saying what he thought he wanted you to hear. You check those record tapes. I want your medical analysis as quickly as possible. Well, what's with the captain? I'll be in the medical record library. Yes, please do. I'm dying to know what this is all about. He is very concerned, though. Still no readings of life forms on the planet's surface. Let's assume that it's intelligent, that it knows that we're looking for it. It would have to be able to change its molecular structure. Something that can change its form at will? Who's this guy? Ensign Garavik reporting, sir. Are you the new security officer? Yes, sir. Did you write a will? I have a report on Ensign Rizzo. He's dead, sir. Oh, no. You knew Rizzo? Yes, sir. We were good friends. You'll get a crack at what killed him. Interested? Yes, I am, sir. Reading is changing, sir. Die coronium reading now, sir. Rise. Should they be wearing some Take the circle around to the gear? left. The creature is dangerous. If you see it, fire full phasers. Creature? Fire at it? I thought it was... Okay. So it could be a gas or it could be a... It's creature form? Behind you. What happened? It killed two again. What happened when he fired at it? 
I am now even more convinced that this is not only an intelligent creature, but the same which decimated the crew of the USS Farragut 11 years ago in another part of the galaxy. Same type of creature or same individual creature? Is it one of a kind? Composition. It was like a gaseous cloud. Ensign, did you sense any intelligence in this gaseous cloud? No, sir. I hovered for a moment, then moved toward my men. It was... Did you say it hovered? You fired at a large hovering target at that distance and missed? I, I didn't fire while I was hovering, sir. You mean you froze? No. Well, I was startled for a second. By the time I fired, the thing was already moving. Well, from what I saw, it seemed like he fired pretty quickly. So if it did move, it did move pretty freaking fast. I only hesitated for a moment. Yeah. Sir. Ensign, you're relieved of all duties and confined to quarters. Um, seems kind of harsh. You're a little hard on the boy, Jeff. He froze. One man was killed. Scientifically. You'll both be filing reports. Make your comments and recommendations. This isn't the first time that this has happened, but I feel a little frustrated when Kirk, like, has information and he's not sharing it with, with Bones and, and Spock. Oh, he's so upset. But we'll be ready to leave orbit in under half an hour. We're not leaving orbit, Mr. Scott. The medicine for Theta-7 colony is not only needed desperately... And I'm getting a little tired of my senior officers conspiring against me. Forgive me. Perhaps I shouldn't have used the word conspire. Pizza. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was really... What a word to use. Are you scanning for any unusual movement? We've run a full scanner probe twice. Well, then run it 20 times if that's what it takes. Uh, apparently he's, he went through some crazy traumatic stuff 11 years ago. Cause he's really letting his emotions get. <sighs> I need your advice. Then I need a drink. <laughs> there are many aspects of human irrationality. I do not yet comprehend obsession for one. Mm. Jim and his creature. Have you studied the incident involving the USS Farragut? Nearly half the crew and the captain were annihilated. The captain's name was Garavik. Same as our answer. His father. Among the survivors was a young officer on his first deep space assignment, James T. Kirk. And there is still more. His first assignment, deep space. Wait, no, just tell me, Spock. There's more? Tell me. Am I letting the horrors of the past distort my judgment of the present. What I'm wondering is why can't they deliver the medicine or the vaccine and then come back to this problem? Because it's it's isolated to this planet, assumedly. Scanner report. No unusual readings. It can't have just vanished. Monsters come in many forms. You know the greatest monster of them all, Jim? Guilt. Jim, when a young officer is exposed to unknown dangers for the first time... That... Ensign Garavik is a ship command decision. I was speaking of Lieutenant James T. Kirk. According to the tapes, this young Lieutenant Kirk insisted upon blaming himself. Oh, he made the same mistake? Because I delayed in firing him. You delayed firing for a grand total of perhaps two seconds. How do we know firing would do anything to it? A gas gaseous... Don't you understand? Kill 200 crew. Captain Garavik. Very important to you, wasn't he, Jim? The finest man I ever knew. I'd have killed that thing if I had fired soon enough the first time. You don't know that, Jim. Yeah. It must be destroyed. He's so obsessed. Obsessed? A young boy who reminds you of yourself 11 years ago. Don't push our friendship past the point where I have to take I'm a visit. Not, Jim. I am preparing a medical log entry on my estimation of the physical and emotional condition of a starship captain. Wow, things are getting very intense. Which requires a witness of command grade. Spock. Do I take it, Doctor? Both of you, or either of you, consider me unfit or incapacitated. We respectfully ask permission to inquire further and... Bless it, forget the manual! This is really strange. <sighs> I'll see it later. I'm convinced that this is the same creature that attacked the Farragut 11 years ago. And? As it attacked us 11 years ago. I could feel the intelligence of the... Did it communicate with you? Whatever it is. What if it is the same creature that attacked 11 years ago? Then we should deal with it. But we... If it is an intelligent creature, if it therefore is capable of space travel, 
It could pose a grave threat to inhabited planets. I guess if it can... Intuition, however illogical, is recognized as a command prerogative. Now, may I ask what medical log entry you intend to make? My medical log remains open. I have a reading on the... the... whatever it is, Captain. Leaving the planet's surface, heading into space. Okay. Prepare to leave orbit. So, it makes a little bit more sense now. This thing isn't just gonna stay on the planet. It could leave, and now it is trying to leave. We can't maintain warp rate speed much longer. Pressures are approaching the critical... It's going that fast? We're barely closing on it, Captain. We could be pursuing it for days. Do what you can to increase our speed, Scott. Magnification 12. There, sir. What is it? What does it look like? It could possibly use gravitational fields for propulsion. And you don't find that sophisticated, Mr. Spock? Well, whether it has intelligence or not, it is very dangerous and deadly. If we keep this speed, we'll blow up any minute now. Go to warp six. Okay, we're slowing down. And now this thing could be getting away to wreak havoc on the galaxy. And Kirk would have let it get away again. But what choice does he have? What's happening? You're lucky you're out of it. What do you mean out of it? I caused it. Oh, no. If I'd fired my phaser quickly enough on Argus 10, this wouldn't have happened. History is repeating itself. You know, self-pity is a terrible first course. I told you, Christine, I'm not hungry. Dr. McCoy thought you might say something like that. This is his officially logged prescription for you. It has one word on it. Eat. <laughs> Jeez. What's that? Hmm? She made it up? A survey on Sinian respiratory diseases. But what were you doing with this? Applying psychology. <laughs> that was awesome. I loved that. I don't understand. It was outrunning us. Maybe it's decided to fight. Phase is ready. Is that split pea soup? We got the giant starburst again. Oh, what did he do? Bypass ventilation? Oh, he's gonna let that stuff in. Wait. Why would something like that be in his personal quarters? Move in closely, Mr. Chekhov. Captain, request permission to return to my post. Locked on target. Fire phasers, Mr. Chekhov. It just moved out of the way. Fire photon torpedoes. It's coming, sir. Deflectors up. The deflectors will not stop it, Captain. Is it gonna come in the ship now? And through the number two impulse vent. Okay, but there's no way that switch inside his... It attacked two crewmen, then got into the ventilating system. You can add that little price tag to your monster, huh? That's enough, Bones. It's wow. not enough. May I suggest we no longer belabor the question of whether or not we should have gone after the creature. Yep. Creature, Mr. Spock. It turned and attacked, Doctor. Scotty, try flushing the radioactive waste into the ventilation system. Why? Wouldn't that spill out into the ship? Sorry, Jim. I was wrong. The creature's ability to throw itself out of time sync in the instant the phaser hits. If you had fired on time... It wouldn't have hit. It would have made no more difference than it did an hour ago. Fault. It was not yours, Jim. If you want to play analyst, Spock, you're someone else, not me. My concerns with the ship and the crew. I don't know if Kirk's ready to hear that yet. Benson, am I correct in my assumption that you've been disturbed by what you consider to be a failure on your part? Mr. Spock, <clears throat> it's very kind of you to come here. I simply would like you to accept the fact that your reaction has its basis in a physical. Sir, it's coming to the vent. Get out of here. I've got to see it off. What is he doing? Pictures in my cabin. It's got Mr. Spock. Reverse cabin pressure, 341. Security, hold it. Jim, Spock may be dying. You saved my life, Captain. I should be lying dead in there, not him. Fortunately, neither of us is dead, Ensign. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Mr. Spock, why aren't you dead? It's that green blood of his. My hemoglobin is based on copper, not iron. Of course. I think I understand something now. I said the thing was alive. Mm. I think I know something else now. 
What? Oh my gosh, this episode. There's, it's such a tease. The creature's moving back toward the number two impulse vent. The radioactive flushing may be affecting it. Open the vent. On my way to the bridge, Kirk out. Edson Garrick. Yes, sir. Reassigned to post. You were on the bridge. What was your impression of the battle? The techniques used against the creature. Ineffective, Captain. And, Anson, what is your appraisal of your conduct on the planet? I delayed firing. And if you hadn't delayed firing, no difference, Anson. No weapon known would have made any difference. Then, or 11 years ago. Report for duty, Anson. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Well, that was the pep talk he needed. The creature has left the ship at high warp speed. It was bearing 127 Mark 9, but I've lost it now. So it's gone. I believe I know where it's going. Logic would dictate. Oh, I'm playing intuition. It's check off. Compute course for Tycho Star System. That's the location of its attack on the OSS Farragut 11 years ago. Oh. In Garavik's quarters, I said the scent of the creature was somehow different. Something in my mind said home. He speaks. Yes, I think I do. Uh, <laughs> is where it fought a starship once before. I was going to say something, but it might not be really appropriate, but he speaks the smelling language. Antimatter seems our only possibility. An amp should be sufficient. Contact medical stores. I want as much hemoplasma as they can spare. It seems attracted to red blood cells. What better bait could we have? There is still one problem, Captain. A matter-antimatter blast will rip away half the planet's atmosphere. If a man is beaming up when that hits, we may lose him. That's exactly why I've decided to set the trap myself. I think I know who's going to volunteer. I'd like permission to go with you, sir. I had you in mind, Mr. Garavik. Okay. I feel like some of the scientific stuff is going over my head on this episode. Might need some clarification. Detonator. Thank you, sir. Kirk out. Captain, look. Okay, it's baited. The bait's already taken. We'll have to use something else for bait. What? Garavik, get back to the ship. Captain, you're not gonna be the bait. This other guy's gonna do it. He's gonna sacrifice himself. Jeez. It's no time for heroics. I have no intention of sacrificing myself. No? Spock, scan us, and lock onto us. It's going to be close. And by Enterprise. Cutting it close by the milliseconds again. Now, energize and detonate. Ooh. They were still... Oh, no. Energize. All decks, stand by, shockwaves. Do something. We are, Doctor. Got them. A piece of them, anyway. A piece of them. A crazy way to travel, spreading a man's molecules all over the universe. Are we all good? Captain. <laughs> what did he do there? It was my cross-circuiting to be that recovered them. Thank pitchforks and pointed ears. Thank pitchforks and pointed ears. <laughs> now the creature is dead, let's save some lives. We'll deliver your medicine. Oh, Ensign, I'd like to talk to you about your father. Several tall stories I think you'd like to hear. Thank you, sir. I would. Aw, they're gonna bond over this. Well, is this the only episode this Garavik's gonna be in? Because I feel like he should return. That was a bit of a confusing episode for me. I didn't really understand a lot of the things that were going on. I thought for a second that when he flipped that switch that he was going to make it somehow that the creature would be able to get in the ship because of a control that was in his quarters. And I think it was just the control for his specific vent so it let the creature come in through his vent and then it was kind of busted so it, it couldn't close it back. I also thought it was a little bit strange coming right off of the previous episode that we watched, The Deadly Years, when Kirk was exhibiting all these physical and neurological 
symptoms of not being capable of aging and, and not being mentally sound or sharp, his memory. And why didn't Bones and Spock then do this and say like, hey, you know, we might have to write a report to get you off because because clearly you're unfit to be the captain at the moment. Why did they have to go through that whole trial? Maybe it's a little bit inconsistent or not making too much sense because they just that's how they wanted to write the episode and that's how they wanted to create the drama differently in each episode. Or maybe there's something that I'm not aware of or that I'm not understanding or that I'm missing here on why they handled these situations um, so differently. I kind of liked the parallel and the link between the two Garaviks and then the parallel between Kirk and the younger Garavik and how Kirk was able to overcome his guilt after so many years and then in turn helping uh, young Garavik, I don't remember his first name, I can't recall, to get over his guilt um, in, as being in the same situation as Kirk was. We had some really great interactions between Spock and Bones, love to see them together and Bones with some really great lines and deliveries. And lastly, I'm just really sad that um, this character, uh, Garavik, the young Garavik, is probably, I'm guessing, not going to show up anymore um, after this. And I would have loved to see, like, Kirk kind of take him under his wing and watch, like, this character kind of grow and form a bond with Kirk as, like, maybe a father-son kind of thing. Although... I don't think Kirk is old enough to be his father, but maybe like a big brother. I don't really know, but something like that would be really cool. And um, I just, I don't think that's going to happen. So that's kind of disappointing because of the episodic nature of this series. And I think they kind of have like their returning characters kind of already set. And I don't think they're, they're going to be adding anymore, at least not in a very meaningful way. Anyways, if he does show up again, don't tell me. It'll be a nice surprise, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. And that was the episode Obsession. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed watching this episode as I always do, and I can't wait to read your comments. And also, I can't wait for the next episode. And I know this is a slow journey, but I am enjoying it as we go very much. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.